here we go. First things first. We have a new Spider Gwen number one baby, and this is this isn't your your dad's Spider Gwen. Okay, this is Spider Gwen Ghost Spider. Now, the reason for this name change that a lot of people don't really understand is that they want to put Spider-Gwen in all the new kid-friendly, all-ages, the Marvel Rising material. And calling her Spider-Gwen is a little bit confusing to kids because her hero name was never really Spider-Gwen. I mean, up until the ending of her last series, because where she got outed, but that's a whole other story. It's a brand new series, baby. This is the new and improved Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. We got covers by Bengal. We got writing by Sean and McGuire. We got interior art by Rosie Comp, but oh my boy, this is a beautiful first issue. I, I fell off with Spider-Gwen towards the ending of her last series, but mm, I'm back on board, especially starting off with this Spider-Geddon tie-ins. Oh my god, Christos Gage delivering the nonsense with the Geddon, bringing my girl Gwen into there. Oh, you better Spider-Get on this issue. Oh, and what is this? Number two, two for two? We got Return of Wolverine number two with this beautiful cover by Steve McNiven. But what is that? Oh, the interiors are no longer by McNiven. What? I don't have to wait months. Oh, wait a second. That's not even the right thing to say because this book got delayed because McNiven is going to be doing interiors for the last issue. But, oh, that's another story. We'll, we'll get to that in a, another couple months. But, hey, hello. We have Declan Shalvey on interiors for Return of Wolverine numbers two, three, and four. That's still set so far. It used to be five, but now it's McNiven back on there. But, ooh, I love Shalvey. Shalvey is my boy. Ever since the, we got Deadpool, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, uh, Injection, Warren Ellis' Moon Knight. Oh, my God. This guy is a banger. And look, he's not even being colored by Jordi Belair as usual. What? We got Laura Martin colors, and boy, does it pop. It fills a very, very nice void in the... Where is my McNiven from that number one? Because he's got some new team working on his inking and coloring over there. And I mean, it's 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 a bit of a change, but I'm glad to have some consistency from here on out, at least for the next three issues, I guess. But hey, I like Shalvey, I like McNiven. I'll take them both. And on the same book, you can't go wrong. We're Tonal Wolverine number two. He's back. We got Hot Claws. Hot Claws this issue. Hot Claws. First appearance of Hot Claws. Ooh, what is this here? Another foil cover on a Superman book, but... Good lord, I had Superman, the Bendis Superman, on my list a couple weeks ago. And now here we have Bendis' action comics on my list. What the? I haven't even really been enjoying this run that much. But, ooh, the last issue of Superman, this issue of action, bangers. Like, non-stop good. Th this issue, we get the confrontation between uh, Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman, and his uh, girlfriend wife, Lois Lane, because hey, where has she been since that whole Man of Steel scenario happened? What has she been doing with Mr. Superman's dad and his son in space? What's been happening? Why is she back and not talking to him? Well, hey, this issue, you get to find out all that glory, glory goodness. And ooh, bubby. Honestly, you should just pick this up for the Steve Rude cover. I mean, like, good Lord, Bendis is hogging all that talent to himself, and they gave him the foil one too? Look at them clouds, boy, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful issue, beautiful cover. Beautiful issue 1004. Look at that. I'm so glad that I kept that thousand there. It's so good. You got to get it. My number four this week, you get Justice League Odyssey number two. Now, this book has been extra delayed, but hey, look at that. You get this nice foil shine for it being delayed. We wouldn't have this beautiful foil cover if it wasn't for uh, those delays happening. Thanks. So, double thanks to Stefan Sedgic for. Uh, you know, making these characters a little bit too sexy. And double thanks for Josh Williamson for getting this story a little convoluted. Well, you know, that's thanks to Editorial. Thanks, DC Editorial, for giving us this beautiful foil cover for Justice League Odyssey number two. We get into the why is Dark Side there? What does he know? We get into Starfire being a goddess on this ancient planet that was just freed from all these little containment units, dark multiverse nonsense. But hey, Azrael goes wild, threatens the rest of his team. What else is the Bat character supposed to do in a book like this? But hey, it's beautiful. I'm so happy this is finally coming back out on the schedule. And I love Stefan Sedgwick. And it just gets, it gets even better looking at this issue here. So definitely go give that beautiful cover a shine. Look at that. Dark side, cyborg, beautiful. And what is this, number five? This isn't a regular comic book. What, this reads backwards? What? This is a manga, everybody. This is Mob Psycho 100, Volume 1, that finally got its localization thanks to Dark Horse. You know, they've been doing pretty, pretty decent with their little localization. They've been doing Gantz forever. We're getting I Am A Hero from them. And now we get Mob Psycho 100. And what? Wh 
Why is this? I, I, I maybe heard about Mob Psycho maybe a year and a half ago. They got some sort of anime or something. Uh, maybe because it's made by the guy that makes One Punch Man, I'm guessing. You know, my man, One. See, that's, that's his name. He just goes by One. And the thing I love about this and that series, so One Punch Man, that has... There's two different versions of One Punch Man running. There's one that the author, one, writes and does the art for himself, which is like webcomic style, but the, the style that everybody knows that got animated and that is the long-running manga series is getting redrawn by a very, very famous Japanese artist, Yusuke Murata. He's done beautiful promo pieces for Marvel for like The Amazing Spider-Man, um, not Amazing Spider-Man, for Spider-Man Homecoming and for Spider-Man 2 versus Doc Ogg. Like, this guy is a big, big fan of... Of, uh, the old Western comic book art, and why wouldn't he get into the superhero stuff with that? I'm like, come on, come on, you can you can do some Mob Psycho for us a little bit, because this here, this is all of one's original web comic style art throughout this whole first issue, and that was a I was a little put off when I tried to get into it at first, but after I saw the trailer for the anime, I was like, oh, I like the way this is being adapted, so I pushed through, got through the art read it online, but now I can finally put it on my shelf with all my other manga, and it looks beautiful. It's got this nice glossy finish on the 100. It's got, you know, it's got a little mob on the side there. We get the first appearance of Teru in here. This covers about the first probably three or four episodes of, of the anime, but if you like the anime, definitely give this a shot because you get to experience the beautifulness that is one art in this here book. You'll love it. Alrighty, gang, so that does it for this week of my favorite books that are coming out. And uh, you should go ahead and check those out. At least come on through, give them a flip through, look at those shiny covers, or flip through that little manga I talked about. But hey, in the meantime, you should go follow Brotastic Nerdum on all these little platforms right here, or down below, or wherever else they may be. And after you do that, go ahead and follow, like, subscribe to Comic Kings on Facebook and Instagram. Comic Kings VB, baby. And I'll see you guys next time.